The tragedy of the terror infamy begins from the very beginning of the show, and it's because of a cruelty uh, done to a person. When they become spirits, they become demons and try to get at whoever made their lives uh, a horror story. And uh, one person after another, that demon spirit sees as her enemy gets possessed. And it's relentless. It's impossible for Yuko to raise twins on the street. She has no reason to live, so she did suicide. Afterlife that we depict in episode six is uh, inspired a lot by uh, Kobayashi Kwaidan. So this is a stage set. We decided to put this on the stage just so that it had a slightly fake, surreal feel, and it's being shot in a way that will have a kind of a dreamlike quality to it. And so we, we gradually realize as an audience that there's something not quite right about this place. This world that we're seeing is kind of a very pretty hell. Uh, choices of kimonos and colors came from in-depth discussion with the production designer and what he was going to be using for colored background elements. These flowers are more alive. I mean, they're more upright. <coughs> yes. I mean, the green kimono, they're more <coughs> down. And there's even a dead flower in the green kimono mm -hmm. that was embroidered mm -hmm. on there. We did sink in the sand. It was not really too difficult, but it was really fun. There's a board under the sand, and then I step on it, and then actually really sink in, in, in the sand. Oh my god. <laughs> Yuko's look as a living corpse. The extreme version of it was created by Bill Terazakis, who does our special makeup effects. I do the portions where she's covered up, so those ideas are subtly peeking through. The hardest thing was special makeup because it takes like three and a half hours before shooting. One of the ways in which the Japanese culture is really visible in the show is through a lot of Buddhist traditions, particularly around death and funerals, which were incredibly important to the Japanese people because of their superstitions around ghosts and the spiritual realms and the way that they interacted with the living realms. And this is the sutra, which is a prayer. And these were placed out as well as gravestones, but this is another way in which they remember their daily departed. It was a very complex and interesting moment for Chester to come face to face with his own mother. I think the spirits do hide the hard truths, and Henry and Asako sort of rewrote the past for Chester, and the recurrence of Yuko as a spirit is the thing that threatens to explode that history that they've rewritten. I felt the spirit so much pain, so much desire. A huge part of Asako had forgotten it, or wanted to forget it. 
but the truth always comes out, doesn't it? You know, things always catch up with you. I had a sister. Her name was Yuko. Your sister? Is the Yurei? Yurei? How can this be? Yamato understands that. That spirit has not been satisfied. And he knows that there are things that can be done to deal with that. Three, two, one, action! This is a storage shed that's on the edge of our internment camp. And we're actually going to burn this down. And there was many, many hours of discussion about how we were going to do this, both to make it safe and make it exciting. So some of the considerations we had to put into place for the burn was obviously the distance from all the other buildings, the distance from trees. I think that we pretty much have everyone on the show involved in some way in this sequence tonight. There's effects, stunts, special effects, makeup effects. So there's a huge number of elements that are coming together to create something really unique. All I know is that I am wearing fire retardant clothes, so it's going to be pretty intense. When we get to the big kahuna, we're going to have the shed go up. We really only have one shed, so we've got to get it right. Ready? In three, two, one. We thought we destroyed the bad soul of Yuko, but she comes back, she's persistent. You are trying to outrun a demon, but you know that won't work. It becomes really complicated and, and trying to figure out how do we appease this Yude? How do we stop her? And he actually enlists the help of, of Luce than her, her own family and her own culture and her own uh, spiritual side of the Mexican traditions. Curanderismo is to connect to that soul, to that spirit, to that energy. Chester's realization at the end is uh, you can't kill her. You have to understand her and honor her. The Mexican Karanderismo folklore and the Japanese folklore are in some ways very much one and the same. If you continue to try to fight fire with fire, you will just destroy generation after generation after generation.